is gonna be one of those old-fashioned style vlogs straight out of like 2010. It's a keytar and not a rifle. I've had to say that twice. But Wanda and I are going on MIDI quest. Also, yes, my keytars have names. I'm currently on a privately owned road that um I own. So I can vlog here all I want because I'm not legally on the streets. I have a decent synthesizer setup, but I'm trying to I'm trying to sort of do a like if this is the cheapest keytar setup ever possible. So that's what we're uh, gonna shoot for. The reason we're not starting at Walmart is that I cheated and I started mini quest early and Walmart lost. Walmart, how could you betray me? Midi Quest is going to be somewhat hindered by the fact that it's Sunday and I live in an area where everything closes at 8 or earlier on Sundays. Midi Quest will be much more successful if I don't keep getting stuck at every single really long red light. So we just had to explain Midi Quest to a couple of guys at Best Buy and they had never heard of Midi, which is fine because they're an electronics store and not a music store. I said I didn't want to go to Guitar Center with Keytar, and they said, what's a Keytar? I'm not quite sure why I'm, like, lying in this awkward slouch either. Gonna move on to Target, I guess. So, Midi Quest Part 2. As you can tell, I'm in Target. So far, they had two portable keyboards, but neither had a Midi in or Midi out, actually. I don't know why a keyboard with an onboard synthesizer would have Midi out but not Midi in, but that's not the point. The point is that the people at Target were much more helpful about it than the people at Best Buy. This is also not my normal Target, which means two things. One, I don't feel in any way awkward about vlogging in public here. And two, I have no idea where the exit is. Everything is closing because it's Sunday. Somehow, I went in front of the four stop trammel there. That's new for me. Check out this bitch in Sunset. Okay. And we're done. Sunset. Onward we go. Okay, so it is reaching 8.30 p.m. It's starting to get dark out, and Midi Quest is calling itself a close for the day. This is proving to be much, much more difficult than I initially had thought it would be. I thought Midi Quest would be really simple and easy, and it was not. We paused Midi Quest for me to say that I just cooked the best fish I've ever cooked. All right, we're on Midi Quest day two. I'm gonna start out by going to Fry's. If I can remember how to get to Fry's. That's really the, the trick right there. All right, so we have made it to Fry's without dying. I did have to turn on my GPS. And we're now in the toy section. Fry's is also unsettling to me because the strings that they hang their signs from blend in with the ceiling and it genuinely looks like it's, uh, like it's floating. Also, this Fry's is railroad themed. That also makes me a little bit nervous. Can't quite figure out why. I think I've almost found it. I haven't found it, but I've almost found it. It's three stores and I've finally found one. We're gonna check out prices at Guitar Center. I'm gonna go to Guitar Center, which is amazing. But I'm gonna get coffee first. Cause coffee. It's one last place I'm gonna check out before I actually go into Guitar Center. 18 inch dolls are in the same aisle as the children's guitar things. Makes this the most dangerous part of the store for me. The sharp observer will note that I'm not in Guitar Center because I chickened out. I looked at the sun and I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> it's gross. So my last chance of avoiding Guitar Center turned out to not work out, which was fine because it's Goodwill. We're gonna go to Guitar Center. We're gonna walk there. But I did want to make it really clear. I don't disagree with the fact that Guitar Center exists. I'm glad that there's an affordable and accessible way for people to get a wide range of musical things given to them, instead of having to rely on going 500 miles out of the way to get somebody who only does pianos. But the reason that I hate going into Guitar Center is because I walk in there and I'm filled with equal parts. I am not skilled enough or dedicated enough to deserve to be in here, and I need to buy everything I want. It's not a good combo. That was exciting. It is 12.30. I don't work until 6, and so we're gonna go on Midi Quest Part 2. We're gonna go on the part of Midi Quest where you go to thrift stores in Lincoln. I do need to make it clear that 100% of the reason that we're going on Midi Quest today is that I really need to wash my car, and I have to go into the city to do that. Because, as the careful observer will notice, I live in ass fuck nowhere. It's like, it's seven miles to the nearest convenience store. It's crazy out here. Thrift Shop 1. Didn't have it. I didn't really think they would have it, but they, uh, it's a thrift shop run by an animal rescue and they have kitties up for adoption that just 
have little condos in there. I just wanted to go in there and see the kitties. I did it. I won Midi Quest. So I did technically just win Midi Quest at $25, but I didn't buy it because partially there's still a $100 hold on my bank account. So I have 11 cents available to me. And mostly because I already have that keyboard at home. So it is possible to win Midi Quest, but it's taken me six stores and just some good luck. I'm hardcore not trying to haggle here, but I'm probably never gonna go back because they had an American Girl doll for $100 without any of their outfits or anything. And an American Girl Truly Me doll. Uh, let me look that up. Yeah, they're 115 bucks. So if I'm gonna buy an American Girl doll, I might as well get one with the original things. Anytime that I run into a store that is massively overpriced twice, I just don't wanna go there. And as a tip to everybody on the West Coast, people tell you that the Singer Model 66 with the red eye pattern is valuable, but it's not any more valuable monetarily than any other singer pattern. It has slightly more monetary value on the East Coast. They sold like 500,000 red eye singers and a huge majority of them made it over to the West Coast. So the only reason people think it's valuable is that people say it's valuable, but nobody will spend $300 on a sewing machine even if it's in a fantastic cabinet. 90% of the sewing machines that I own, I got for free because somebody didn't want them. You literally cannot give them away. Just throwing that out there. Also, most important thing ever, just because somebody listed it on eBay at that price does not mean it sold for that price. The end. Just realized that um, I still have that hold on my bank account so I can't buy a car wash, which is a bummer. Dude, you're not in Canada. And it most certainly appears that this place is not open today. I insulted a goose and he brought his posse in to teach me a lesson. So I went to the piano store. USB MIDI's taking over and that's fine. Uh-oh. So a uh, final summary of MIDI Quest is uh, part one, finding brand new MIDI modules, whether they are attached to a keyboard or a tone generator or any other device. If you are looking for five pin MIDI, you're gonna have problems. Um, if you go through thrift stores, you're sort of stuck with whatever they might have and they may or may not have something, which puts the cost of a MIDI module at somewhere between $25 and $350. It's all dependent on your luck and how much time you spent shopping. I have spent three quarters of a tank of gas on MIDI Quest. Obviously, that's not going to be something that everybody spends on because most people don't live 10 miles out from civilization. But MIDI Quest did prove to be much more difficult than I had expected. I had sort of expected to be able to go to Target or Best Buy, pick up a keyboard, and have it be good but most lower end keyboards don't have five pin MIDI anymore. A lot of them don't even have USB MIDI. But as far as MIDI Quest, I arguably won, but I don't really think I won. Doesn't feel like I won. Feels like I just wasted a lot of time. The other thing we've established is that the Get Up Kit's fucking rock.